welcome to a special NLCS edition of the Gallon of Questions podcast here in San Diego. I'm Pat Gallon, and we just saw the Phillies blow a 4-0 lead in San Diego to lose game two, 8-5. Now it's back to Philadelphia. So we bring in a heavy hitter right here, one of the greatest <laughs> to do it of all time. Jason Stark is with me. Jason, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Uh, so this one, I, I think if you had said before the series started that you're going back to Philadelphia 1-1, most fans would take that, right? <laughs> Except maybe not after the way game two went down. Uh, how do you look at the first two games of this series? Yeah, a split always is the idea in theory, but not necessarily when you have Wheeler and Noah right. going games one, two. The Phillies' biggest advantage in this whole postseason has been to run those guys out there as much as possible. They've pitched more than half the innings the entire team has pitched. And the idea is to win those games because it gets so challenging in the other games. And especially now because after this flight back east, there are no more off days, Pat. And so the depth of this staff will be tested. And that's not necessarily advantage for us. No, it is not. Aaron Nola, four and two-thirds innings, gave up six earned runs. And he's been so good with that start right before the end of the regular season against Houston and then St. Louis and Atlanta. Really been on his game. Today, though, it just unraveled, and especially in that fifth inning. Uh, what did you make of, of his performance today? I guess everyone is due one of those starts. <laughs> it just so happens that it's in a huge game, too, in the NLCS. I, he's allowed to allow an earned run once a month. <laughs> but the problem with this one is the rotation. Everybody had allowed five earned runs in the entire postseason. And for Aaron Nola to give up six earned runs today and for that to turn into a five-run inning in the fifth inning, that is a, a, a series-changing development. Because if you hand Aaron Nola a four-run lead, you're supposed to win. And if you win today and you go up 2-0 mm -hmm. on the road, you're going to the World Series. It's that simple. There have been 24 teams since the best of seven series went to this format, World Series and LCS. Right. Only three of them have won games one and two on the road and not won the wow. series. And so this is a must-win situation. The ball was in Aaron and Nola's hands, and he, he just couldn't finish that inning. The one thing I've noticed with Aaron, as great as he is, he sometimes struggles from the stretch. You know, he'll go floating yeah. through a game out of the windup and be perfect. And then for some reason, some games, he mm -hmm. loses his rhythm in the stretch. I felt like that happened in this game. Did you see a particular at-bat or sequence where you thought things <laughs> maybe changed? Obviously, he gave up those two home runs earlier in the game, but in that fifth inning, it felt to me like against his brother was sort of the, uh, the death knell there. Yeah, I would say exactly the same thing. To have him facing his brother and go up in that at-bat, 0-2, He's got to finish that yeah. off for a million reasons. <laughs> Some of those reasons had to do with bragging with rights, maybe a little. All the trash <laughs> talking he's going to hear for the rest of his life. Um, but the other reason, obviously, is the importance of that at bat in the series. I just talked to his brother a little while ago, and he even he admitted that was one of the biggest at bats of his life, sure. one of the biggest hits of his life, and again yeah. for every reason. But the game changed then. The series changed then, and NOLA family chemistry, right. I think, changed then. <laughs> so from that point forward, NOLA gets on base, then Profar, then Soto, and then uh, he strikes out Machado, and that was the end of his day. But did you think that Rob Thompson made a mistake not at least getting the bullpen moving before that sequence? You know, I understand it. Um, Rob has so much trust in Aaron, and he's earned that trust. But... You know, the way I look at managing postseason baseball is every game is like a game set. You know, it really doesn't matter a whole lot what happened yesterday, what happened last week, what happened, especially April to September. What matters is win this game. And, look, I know it happened fast, but it, it did feel like you could see the wheels coming off, and that there just wasn't a move there that Rob Thompson made, felt he could make, that could stop that inning. Uh, Brad Hand obviously coming in, 
face Jay Cronenworth turned out to not be that good. Sure, big. yeah, ends up hitting Jay Cronenworth and in the inning then continues to spiral out of control. Eleven batters make it to the plate in that inning. Right. Um, well, you know, we look at it obviously from the Phillies' perspective. The Padres have a team too, <laughs> and they've got some pretty good players, Juan Soto and Manny Machado uh, being two of those guys. But really the bottom of the order continued to, to hurt the Phillies as well. Austin Nola uh, is hitting like 375 on this, and, and you know we are not used to, to seeing that. <laughs> but again, the Padres they've got a team too. So who do Phillies fans need to keep an eye on as the series shifts back to Philadelphia? Well, you, uh, you know I know that the, the bottom of the order has been, has had a really good October for them, but I, I think this is a series of stars. It's funny these are the five six seeds in the, in, the, in the league, and people on the outside are almost treating this like it's. Florida Gulf Coast against James <laughs> Madison in the yeah, tournament or something, bit, but I, I look at these teams and I, I see two star-studded teams with must-watch players, and game one was about the Philly Stars doing their thing. Game two was Machado Soto finally making an impact in mm -hmm. the series, and I think controlling those two guys is essential for the Phillies. Bryce Harper's been really good. It feels like he's... Uh, <laughs> Carrying this team right now, uh, I saw a stat earlier that's seven straight postseason games with an extra base hit. The first person to do that since Carlos Beltran back in 2004. Yeah, that, ever, is, right? yeah so. that is impressive stuff, but it's not all about Bryce Harper. Other guys have to step up, and we really haven't seen Schwarber, Hoskins, or Castellanos get hot. I know Hoskins had that home run late, but what does it say about where the team is right now, offensively speaking? Well, I, if, I were, if you're going to ask me what's the biggest difference between the Padres and the Phillies, it's that it's the quality and depth of the Padres' arms mm. compared to the Phillies. They, they just have more depth yeah. they have more options. And so I always reminded my wife when she was coaching, there are two teams playing, and I would remind Philadelphians, there are two teams playing. Uh, the Padres are going to be a really tough out, and they're going to be a really difficult team to mount a lot of offense against. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I really do think that has a lot to do with it. I, I feel like Kyle Schwarber in particular has turned the corner, bats much better, um, driving the ball much better. Uh, he, he, you know, he, he keeps getting on base now these last four games, but I, you know, I do worry about Reese, although you're starting to see some signs there. Sure. Nick Castellanos. Just looks I, lost right now. I, I, I just feel like in the major leagues, when you get yourself in a funk, trying to swing your way out of that funk and swing it at every pitch, it doesn't work now. They're not going to throw you enough strikes. The Braves threw him a ton of first pitch strikes. That didn't work out there <laughs> that well for the Braves, but I don't see the Padres approaching Nick the same way. And I think it, he, he's got to show more discipline or he's going to have trouble. The series now shifts to Philadelphia. Three straight games Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, it's safe to say that it's huge uh, for both sides, <laughs> whatever happens here in the next three games. But uh, do you think the momentum maybe has shifted from where we saw it in game one? 2 nothing went for the Phillies to a 4 nothing lead, then wiped away, and now San Diego may have stolen a little bit of that back <laughs> as we hit the Philly? You, you know, uh, it's always fun to talk about momentum in postseason it series. <laughs> it's real, to me, it's really more about the math of being up 2-0 versus being 1-1. 1-1, mm -hmm. even heading east, it's still anybody's series. At 2-0, heading east, the Phillies are going to win that series. And so, just they've created a much more difficult scenario going forward because the Phillies... If you, if you start looking to game four, if you start looking ahead to game seven, mm -hmm. you can see how it's going to be tough for them to navigate those games. It worked in game four against the Braves. It's hard to win that way. The Padres don't have those issues. They've got a quality starter for every game in this series. And so the Phillies are going to need to steal a game yeah. because I don't think you want to go game seven here not knowing exactly how you're going to navigate your way sure. through the game. Uh, you've seen a lot of fans in Philadelphia over the years. And I thought the crowd here, especially as they started to mount that comeback, it got really loud yeah, in here. Special. And, and we don't really see a lot of San Diego, obviously, in the postseason. They haven't been in this position in 24 years. But uh, just the, the momentum and the energy in here, what did you think of that? Yeah, 
since the last time the Padres played postseason baseball here, a lot has <laughs> changed. The Chargers are gone. <laughs> They're the only team in town, and they've become the team. This park is one of the most beautiful parks in America. The atmosphere here is fantastic, and it was especially uh, electric, I thought, in that fifth inning, and it made a difference. So you never know how much of a difference, but it clearly made a difference. But was, was it as loud as Philadelphia was mm. those two days in that Brave <laughs> series? I don't know. That's as loud as I've ever heard Citizens Bank <laughs> Park. I'm not saying it was louder than 2008 or louder than 2011 it felt or it. louder than Roy Halladay's <laughs> no-hitter, but it was in the argument. And that energy, that, that <laughs> vibe that Philadelphia fans bring to the big moment, it's going to be important these next three games, don't you think? Yeah, I, I would agree with you 100%. You know, the people are going to be jacked up for that series back in Philadelphia. I'm just mad that here at Petco Park is beautiful <laughs> that I didn't get a chance to, like, have a cold one out there on the lawn. That's one of yeah. the coolest things in all of baseball. But next time, you and I, Jason, will have one. <laughs> uh, the great Jason Stark from The Athletic, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Right. We'll see you back in Philly. And we will see you next. We're going to take a quick break here on a special NLCS edition of A Gallon of Questions podcast. Brandon met a girl on a dating app. He finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. She must be a keeper. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma. Not at birth. Three million Americans have glaucoma and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Mr. Rogers says look for the helpers. You can always find people who are helping. Thank you to all the first responders who put their lives in danger to help us when my brothers and sisters need them. We look out for the helpers because they look out for us. Thank you, first responders. Be safe, look after yourself, and look after one another. Welcome back to a special NLCS edition of a Gallon of Questions podcast inside Petco Park after an 8-5 Phillies loss. They split the first two games of the series, so we head back to Philadelphia for a weekend full of games. Now, we were just inside the clubhouse, and we also heard from manager Rob Thompson. Here is some of the players and the manager post game. Uh, Rob, what did you think was different about Aaron Nola today as opposed to you know the great run that he's been on of late? Uh, probably missing his spots a little bit. Um, I thought he battled pretty well, but we got to the fifth inning there, and you know it was just a lot of hard contact. Uh, and then he got Machado, and I decided to go to Brad because it's probably the best matchup we got coming out of the bullpen. So to try and end that inning right there, and unfortunately, a little slider got away from him. We flushed this game. We we started new back home, uh, split against these guys here, and we got three back home. So we're looking forward to it. Great for the opportunity to get home and then play in front of our fan base. And I know the bank's going to be rocking. And I hope, uh, you know, of course it's going to be hopefully a little colder um, than it is here. You know, a little hot today. So you know, I'll take a 45 degree weather. Um, you know, on Friday night. Okay, we'll break down more on the Phillies and Padres series right after this. It's a special NLCS edition of A Gallon of Questions. Innovation transforms the world, turning the status quo upside down. Innovation created a healthcare system that not only improves the lives of veterans, it transforms the lives of healthcare professionals with unique opportunities to work with industry thought leaders. 
while serving our nation's heroes. The Department of Veterans Affairs, where innovation ensures those who served our nation are served by the very best. See how a career at VA can transform your future. Brandon met a girl on a dating app. He finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. She must be a keeper. Be safe, look after yourself, and look after one another. Repeat after me. Apple, table, penny. Apple, um, bread. I remember watching Dad with the kids and thinking, geez, in six years, will he even know who they are? Ask me again. One in 10 Americans over 65 as Alzheimer's disease. Learn more today at brightfocus.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back to a special NLCS edition of A Gallon of Questions here at Petco Park in San Diego after an 8-5 Phillies loss. We move back to Philadelphia time to get on a plane, travel back. But as we look at the first two games of this series, again, kind of said this with Jason Stark that you'd feel pretty good if you told yourself, hey, we can get a split out of this, go back to Philly with three straight games with the momentum of that crowd on your side. However, it's the way that it went down that is going to leave a very bad taste in the mouth of a lot of Phillies fans and and the Phillies tried to spin this as more of a positive that they can't wait to get back that things like this just happen it's the nature of baseball but they've got to feel like that was a bit of a letdown up for nothing early and then Aaron Nola just unravels and in that second inning where the Phillies did score four it was the way they did it we've become so accustomed to them with the long ball but that was not the case all exit velocities in that inning were under 100 miles per hour that were hits very rare so it was a bunch of flares a little bloop here and there that the Phillies got four runs on and also the Sun played a major role in this building Juan Soto couldn't come up with a play in right field because the Sun was coming through hey things like that happen but then everything kind of spiraled out of control in that fifth inning I would say it was the inning from hell 11 batters reach the plate and Rob Thompson didn't have anyone warming up in the bullpen, didn't have anyone available to jump in when Aaron Nola probably needed a life vest. So did they wait too long? I think that is the question. But it appeared to me that Rob Thompson was saying to his starter that I trust you, that at the first sign or, or second sign of trouble, we're not just going to bail you out. In the end, it ends up biting them, and they lose this game. So that is a question that we'll be talking about, I think, through the remainder of this series. Very interesting stat. I saw this from Sarah Langs. The Phillies were 27-2 and two in the postseason, went up by four or more runs. The only times that they blew those games, once was in 2011, the Cliff Lee game that you all remember, and then in 1993, that crazy 15-14 to 14 World Series game against the Blue Jays that the Phillies ended up losing, and they ended up losing both of those series. Bryce Harper's been really good, as I mentioned earlier. Seven straight postseason games with an extra base hit. It's only the third time that's happened in Major League history, and the last time was 2004 with Carlos Beltran when he went on that ridiculous epic streak with the Houston Astros. But I think when the series shifts back to Philadelphia, three guys in particular are going to have to step it up. Kyle Schwarber, Reese Hoskins, Nick Castellanos. They need more from those guys. It can't all be Bryce Harper putting this team on his back. We'll also see Ranger Suarez in Game 3. And then things, as Jason Stark mentioned, get a little bit dicey when it comes to this pitching staff. That's it for us. Head back to the hotel, then we're going to jump on a plane in the morning, head back to uh, Philadelphia from San Diego. 
We appreciate you joining us here on a special NLCS edition of A Gallon of Questions. I'm Pat Gallon. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching CBS News Philadelphia. Eyewitness News at noon is coming up next.